Hi. Today's talk is about how to include smart home solutions into your therapeutic interventions. I'm Carol Chang. I'm an occupational therapist. I've been an OT for about 25 years, in mostly in an inpatient rehab, in home health, spinal cord, strokes, amputations. And now what I specialize in is in aging in place. So I do virtual consultations. I promote exercise as medicine through online exercises. And I do a lot of remote monitoring. So I'm using tech in my business as well. So how did I get started in this? Well, everybody knows when COVID started, things changed. So um, at that time, I was seeing patients in the ALF in skilled nursing facilities. And there was so much angst with caregivers not being able to be part of the therapy sessions anymore. They're so used to being there when therapists come to teach them things. And they really missed it. So I started getting Echo Shows just from Amazon to enable them to be able to participate. So they would we would turn it on, I would come, they would turn it on, they get to be part of the session, we're talking like three people. Uh, and then I really kind of realized that it was really great for doing things like dropping in just spontaneously to say hi if they had the show right next to their bedside um, or the recliner or the or the bed, you know, they could just come in just like if they were knocking on a door and saying, hi, how's it going? What are you doing? Just a surprise visit. And then I really loved that at that time, the dining rooms were all closed so they could have lunch together. So they at 12 o'clock on, you know, maybe if the daughter had lunch or that's her lunch break, they could have lunch together. So they just sit and chat and eat together. And it was great. The greatest thing that's happened with COVID is that it's really forced everyone to get comfortable with Zoom and technology. I think, you know, maybe in the first six months, there was a bit of a holdout. Well, it'll be fine. But really, we're two years in. And I find with my virtual consultations, I don't have any trouble at all with people. People are very familiar with Zoom. They know how to do it. It's like one link. There's no confusion or anything like that. So we've all kind of gotten used to it. And I know there's a lot of Zoom fatigue too, but it's also been really positive. So I did this talk uh, probably about a year and a half ago. And just even about a year and a half ago, things have changed a lot. The price of tech has gone down. I find that so many more people are familiar with it. I get a lot less questions about, well, how does that work? And, you know, almost everybody has at least one device in their house that will, you know, that, that has really kind of pushed them towards being more familiar with it and less intimidated by it. Um, the functionality is also so much more intuitive. The more you do something, the more it makes sense to you. I'm sure the first time that you got an iPhone, those p those swipes and pieces they just they didn't get, you didn't get it but now you know our brains go oh okay this is how tech works and it's often the same throughout uh, all the devices so and now I find it's just a lot more about fun it's not so serious anymore maybe before it was about you know the really strong um, home. I don't know, home control people that would do that, you know, and now it's just for fun. My kids play on it all the time. So tech really is like universal design. So it just makes life easier for everybody. And I, I'm going to give you a quick example here. You know, everything from just making lists or notes, just saying, you know, grocery, grocery notes and saying, I want you to add these things to the list. I want you to take those off. Um, you know, she is like a virtual assistant. She's repeating back to you all the things that you want just to confirm it. So you'll see um, as you go through this talk that there are so many things that are just helping everybody day to day, just like the way universal design is. You know, it's really useful for the ones who need wider spaces and functionality like that, but everybody benefits to it. So that means that everybody can be using it. It's great for every little thing you can do. And I wanted to give you an example here. So just like everybody else, when my kids, um, when COVID happened, my kids went to virtual school. And uh, at that time, you know, we were two working parents and I wasn't ready for my kids to go back to school yet in person. So I used tech to be able to bridge that gap. 
So I had two-way cameras in there. I had an I had gotten um, an Echo for each kid right next to their computer. So in the same way, I could drop in to their to them and say, "Hey, how's it going? What are you doing? What are you studying? What's going on? Do you need some help?" Um, and you know, I had it totally secure at the time. You know, they were little, ten maybe or seven. Anyway, maybe eight or 10, something like that. But they were little, like little enough that I had concerns about security. And of course, you know, I have a pretty flexible job I'm in and out. So, you know, just like as a very OT way, you know, I'd, I'd let him go like an hour and then they'd be fine and two hours and three hours and four hours. Anyway, the point is, is that, you know, using tech can support these things. So I had the cameras that I could see them. I had the shows where I could drop in and talk to them. The doors all have smart locks on them, so I can auto lock them. I can check my app and make sure that they're all locked, or I can lock them myself if I want to. They can call me app to app. I'm one of those parents. I don't. My kids don't have cell phones, so they use the they use the apps to call me, and it's always it's. It's totally fine. There's never been an issue. I remember one time, you know, they said, um, some, they called and said, hey, there's somebody walking around in the backyard. And I said, huh. So I got onto my app, looked and see, look at the cameras in the backyard. And I'm like, it's okay. Don't worry, guys. It's just the pest guy. Okay. So it can be really convenient for everybody. Um, busy family lives. This is what I noticed that people use it a lot for. So they've got homework reminders, appointment reminders in the, in the morning, you know, play me my news, um, calorie counts and recipes at, at nighttime. You come home and you've got six things in the fridge because you forgot to go to the grocery store. You know, you're, you can ask, what can I make with all this stuff? And it'll pop up recipes. It'll tell you what to do. And, you know, most of the time, I can't remember how to make something off the top of my head. And it just takes too much time for me to dig through a recipe book. So I go and I ask and I say, how long do I cook a squash for? Or how do I do it? Do you have any suggestions? It's really awesome. So it also helps with our less mobile adults. So the, these guys can use their phones and do everything by phone. So they can see who's there. Somebody rings a doorbell. They can pull their Ring app and say, hey, who's there? They can unlock the door for a therapist if, it's, if they've got the smart lock in there. And, you know, if they have the automatic door openers, they could even open it for them. So what are the barriers to technology? So unfamiliar, intimidating, you know, people worry about privacy. Um, it requires effort to learn. There's a learning curve in this. Um, and I'll be real with you, you know, when, when we're, when, even when I'm using it, it may not always be user error. It could be that the app is down or, you know, the connection, the, the power went out. So the Wi-Fi doesn't talk to each other anymore and it needs to be rebooted. So you have to have a certain level of patience with it. But as I'm going to show you, there are a lot of benefits and it will be worth it. It'll be worth it because you'll know how to fix it. And there are some solutions out there that make life a little easier to make it more streamlined, especially with my older patients who really, you know, don't want to be messing with Wi-Fi and, and things like that. So, of course, tech is huge for security. So every, everybody by now knows ring doorbells. Um, I, I have um, a smart lock that actually can, you can set how much, after how much time will it auto lock. So I never lock my door anymore. I don't have, I don't even use my keys. My keys stay in my purse because my, my car also turns on when I get closer. Um, and they make smart locks like that too, where you get a certain distance from it. Your phone gets a certain distance from it and it'll unlock. But I have mine set to, uh, to lock after 10 minutes. And so I don't even bother anymore because I know it's going to lock. And you'll see later, you can create routines and tell it to, to follow a series of things after you say certain keywords. Um, so you can have it lock and then start the security system or shut all the blinds, turn off the thermostat, all those things. Um, so you have indoor cameras that you can see. I initially uh, started using indoor cameras with older adults that didn't always answer the phone. One of the complaints I'd get a lot is parents, or I'm sorry, adult children calling their parents 
and they don't answer the phone. Maybe they didn't hear it. Maybe they're in the bathroom. Maybe they left their cell phone somewhere. And there's a bit of a panic. Oh my gosh, are they okay? What's going on? I can't see them. I can't connect with them. And so, you know, you can do indoor cameras if you're looking for them. If you just want to make sure, just want to peek in and see, like, just make sure they're not on the you know, living room floor because they passed out from, you know, low blood pressure or something like that. It just gives a little bit of peace of mind, but you know, you, you'll have to, you have to have that conversation because not everybody, not everybody feels okay with cameras. Although, you know, I have patients that say they feel so much better knowing that there's somebody on the other side of that camera, that they could look at them if they needed to, or that they're, you know, they feel safer instead of just being alone. Um, they also have some great ones uh, that can just, you can scan all of the locks in your house. So for example, before you go to bed saying, okay, can you make sure that everything is locked? And you can ask too. Like I'll, I will say, hey, is the garage door open or is my security system on? What's going on? So you get a lot of this back and forth feedback. It tells you um, if, it's, if it's set up or not. And I don't have to get out of bed to check. <laughs> all right. Safety, um, definitely. This is all that remote monitoring stuff. Help, I can't get up. Life alert. But in those ones are called PERS buttons. So generally, where you touch them. But really, the new way, and and I think PERS buttons are probably going to go the way of the dinosaur soon. You know, you need voice alert systems. Voice alert ones can help you whenever, wherever you are. I have a lot. I do a lot of um, falls where. People's uh, purrs are not charged. They're in a cupboard somewhere. Um, you know, I had one where she fell and it happened to land in her armpit. And so she lay on the, she laid on the floor for eight hours because she just couldn't get it out of there. Now, everything has pros and cons. So my Parkinson's patients, they're not always the ideal ones for voice alert systems. If, you know, by, if they are tired and they can't make that voice projection, that may not be the right solution for them. So it's just knowing that there are lots of different options out there, but definitely for living alone, that's definitely one thing that can help. The, a lot of people have the Apple Watch now. It has the fall detection on it. It's, I'd say like 50-50. I'd say half, half the times it goes off when it's not supposed to be a fall, and sometimes when you have a fall, it doesn't go off. Um, I recently had one where you know, they felt, oh, that was enough, and he fell in the shower. Where was the Apple Watch? On the counter. It's just habit. We just take off our watches when we take a shower. Um, some of the newer technologies are sensors on the bodies that are actually watching for gait and checking to see is the gait length getting smaller? Uh, are they? Is it predicting? It's predictive of a fall. Can we look at how the person is moving in the house and be able to identify whether or not they are going to have a fall later. Um, and then the bottom one, the pattern analysis programs, you know, that's an even farther step to that's just looking at habits. So sensors all over the house that will show you um, what's going on. So if somebody normally goes to the bathroom eight times a day, and now they're going 15 times a day, is that indicative of a potential UTI? And should we call and make an appointment or maybe talk to mom about what that might, what that might be meaning. Or maybe she just had a lot of um, soda that day. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So the benefits of tech for me, majorly fall prevention. So I really think the less that you can have to move around, the less opportunities that you would have to trip on something or fall on something. So meaning that I don't want somebody shuffling over to turn on the lights in the dark so that they can get the lights on. So if they can use their voice to turn everything on, then you get, you get a clear open path that they're walking in immediately. Um, same with the automatic doors, like not having to close them behind you or lock them behind you. All of these things, it decreases the amount of work that you have to do, and it decreases the amount of energy that you're, you're doing in there. Um, you can do outdoor lights that turn on with sunset. That is a really neat idea. So, you know, it automatically takes care of that. And you'll see later with the routines, you know, you can have everything set up on a schedule. 
So telemedicine is becoming a lot more mainstream also. I have had a lot of virtual visits like that. It's so great for caregivers because if you think about a pre-telemedicine world, you have to organize. Somebody's got to take time off work or organize for that transport. They have to be responsible for getting the, do the, the car transfer, getting in and out, um, you know, making sure they're showered, ready to go on time, you know, not needing to go to the bathroom beforehand. Um, and, you know, the ones who are taking public transport, they're not trying to call the day before, or make sure it's organized, wait for the bus, um, wait the, to maybe two hours that they're, you know, until their appointment is done um, and then call for the bus again. Um, telehealth visits are great, even from a clinician's point of view, being able to do exercises with them, being able to check and see what the environment looks like without actually having to be there. It's so great because it ju has just opened up a lot of potential for rural places where maybe they can't staff enough clinicians, um, maybe ones who just need an incidental checkup. So agencies save a lot more money and time and manpower from not having to send somebody out just to do one thing. So, you know, dropping in on the, on the show, um, these are major time savers, and there are a lot of businesses, um, insurance companies that are using this for managing um, cases, for case management, because it is so much more efficient. So organization is a huge reason why most people will do tech, right? So calendars, uh, reminders for MD appointments, grocery lists, um, you know, we're moving towards not just those incidental reminders, but really targeted ones. So maybe at 12 o'clock, it'll say, hey, take your 10 milligrams of allodipine. Don't forget this dosage. You know, this is something that is going to get more and more targeted to specific to that person. So, um, and of course, drink your water. I love this one because caregivers get so tired of always being the ones to try to remind um, the patient, don't forget, you have to do your exercise. The, the therapist told you three times a day, you know, try, we're trying to shift the burden of caregiving to technology. So you don't, you know, that poor caregiver can get a little bit of a break. Plus, you know, after a while, people get tired of saying, drink your water. So you can have it programmed every two hours. I want this reminder. Home maintenance is a really big one. This is a great thing, especially water detection. You can do like little sensors right near the water heater. And I've seen ones before where they'll do an auto shut off as well. So if you're out of town, you could try to take care of that instead of coming home to a flooded mess. Um, they, have, they have alert systems where if there is water, specifically urine on the floor, that you would get you would get an alert to your phone or the caregiver gets an alert to their phone that there's a potential slip hazard on the floor that maybe somebody didn't notice and didn't clean it up yet but it's just information you're getting data so that you can make decisions um, safety stuff like carbon dioxide levels air quality some really really high-tech houses have you know lots of versions of these kinds of things all right, convenience. So these are the fun ones. These are all those neat things like um, smart ovens that can preheat the oven for you and the smart faucets that can measure out water and they can measure it out at what temperature, exactly what temperature you want it at. You can do washing machines that will start by themselves. You know, maybe you, it's like a crock pot. You can get it to start right after you leave for work because you don't want the noise or same with the dishwasher, or you have a mug of tea in the microwave and you can get it started. Um, I have my, my printer is a smart printer and it will alert me if I'm out of ink. So I don't end up trying to print 25 uh, sheets of paper for an important you know, meeting that I'm having and there's no ink in there and it's gonna take time to get that. So I get notice for that. Um, I love that they have dog treat cameras that can do that. So you can even um, see the dog and give it to them or hang out and talk to them. So there are so many devices that are coming out that are being touted as smart and it's fun. So connection is huge. 
Um, I think, you know, with Zoom and, you know, everybody's used to Zoom meetings because you had to work, but there's also that social side of it, you know, connecting with family, um, just saying, hi, how's it going? It actually just made the frequency of connection a lot better because everyone got used to it. You get virtual baby showers. I've been to several of those. Um, you can download, you, they down, you download like a background and you play games. Um, I know uh, a business that had a virtual lunch and learn. They sent out gift cards to everybody and said, okay, order whatever you want. We all hang out and we'll learn together. They have nonprofits where I live where they did virtual cooking classes and they delivered the food before so everybody was on the same page and they cooked together and same with craft classes deliver all the materials you need and they work together so we need this group activity we are social humans um, and this is a way to get around that it's also important for caregiver support so these meetings that people need to be able to feel heard, now they can do, they have the option to do um, Zoom ones. And what's great is now it's become a lot more hybrid that, you know, anybody can join at any time if it's not convenient or, you know, they, maybe the caregiver has, a, is taking care of someone who is bed bound and, or is not doing well, they can still participate in this. Um, I recently did a, a demonstration at, at this event and it was a 50, 50. So we had 800 people in person, 900 in you know, on Zoom. And then, of course, they can watch the webinar after. Isn't that great? Um, let me see here. And so, and they also have, and, you know, those specific webinars for diseases, those are, you know, you, now you're getting information that you wouldn't normally have been able to do. So we've really lost, um, we don't need to be in the same location anymore. So we have so much more availability for the information that we need. In fact, that is the same with my business that, you know, unless you lived inside my geographic area, may, you wouldn't necessarily get this, the specialized Parkinson's information that I have or the home mod specific for it. And now with Zoom, it, the sky's the limit. I have clients that are in California and, you know, maybe they're in Canada or somebody's mom lives, you know, in a different state and they want me to see her. So it has really opened it up for everybody to get exactly what they need from exactly the person that they want it from. Um, entertainment is huge. We need to laugh. Laughing decreases stress and, you know, and they actually have a, a Facebook page called, you know, isolation kills because it's true. So many of the clients when I'd see in home health, you know, they just, they're just lonely. And I wish that Medicare would pay for those kind of visits for us to chat, just chat and hear about their lives. But, you know, it just isn't like that. So one of the cool things about having technology is that it can give you that feeling of companionship. Um, playing, they have tons and tons of things, just uh, some of the small ones, you know, playing 20 questions, trivia games, you know, you can tell it, tell me a funny story, tell me a sad story, tell me you know, a kid's story, tell me a joke, play me, play me a fun song. They're, they come up with new ones, new skills all the time. So that's a really fun part that it just updates automatically. You're not buying into something that you have to update manually on your own. It just does it by itself. My kids love it. They are always asking um, Alexa for those kinds of things. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of times at my dinner table where, you know, she's, you know, solving a fact question or whatever and sometimes a homework question it happens so it's also great for relaxation so you can literally say help me relax help me calm down you know tell me tell me something to do to help me you know you know feel better or feel happy um you can make i wrote automatic beds here just to say that you can set automatic beds that, you know, the adjustable beds to certain heights. Maybe the way that you relax is to have your feet way up in the air. That could be a way to do that. Um, at nighttime, you can have it turn music on to help you go to sleep. 
uh, turn off the lights to TV to a certain level. Maybe you want the TV at a low volume and you want the lights to progressively get lower and lower and lower over a certain time frame. Um, all of those things are all programmable in there. But let's talk a little bit more about how tech supports independence for our clients. So post fall, I think, is where I see a lot of, of benefit for, for these devices. So in this one, you know, I use this example here of having a wheelchair and a walker at home for three months. You know, you're, especially the ones who are not used to having to be totally dependent, this is really convenient for them. Um, if they're on pain management, you know, this gives you those medication reminders. So make sure you're taking it on a schedule. Make sure that you're icing on a schedule. You have to keep that pain and swelling under control in that first little bit. And it's tough sometimes to remember, especially if people aren't sleeping well at nighttime because of the, the issues. Um, you get home health coming, you get doctor's appointments, trying to keep all these things straight can be hard. So that's really useful having those appointment reminders that it's essentially like a virtual assistant, you know, that at that time, you know, so maybe you don't, you don't have the energy, time, whatever to be able to cook, show me restaurants or call my daughter. Oh shoot. You know, I just got comfortable. I've got my ice on there. And the doorbell rings. And so check, let's check and see on my phone instead. Who's at the doorbell? Can I unlock it for them? Oh no, you know, the remote is, you know, on the couch and I'm all comfortable. Can I use my smart TV to turn it on and change the volume and find a show? Uh, maybe I want to watch a movie, but the sun is coming in. Can I make the blinds come down a little bit more? Um, even phone stuff. I mean, it's inevitable. My phone is never in my pocket when I need it, especially once I'm comfortable. So it's very convenient if you've got everything connected in there, you just, you can call right from there. Call, so call my daughter. Spinal cord injury patients can really use this because what are we trying to do for them? We're trying to decrease the strain on their shoulders. We're trying to save their their limited energy. I mean, if some if something can be done with tech, don't be using it on that. There are lots of other things that a spinal cord patient cannot do that ha cannot be done by tech. So let's try to reserve all of that for for those activities. So it's the same thing: ring doorbells, smarts. The, the spinal cord ones will almost always have an open sesame. That's the automatic door openers. Um, there are other brands out there, but that is one that's been around 25 years. And that one functions like, um, like apartment buildings when they buzz you in. There is basically like a little connector in there and you hit it and it'll open. Um, garage door openers, those are very great. Those are very common. Um, and I will say from having installed two of them, they're not yet there yet with tech. I mean, it's not the tech that's out of the problem. It's the installation part of it. It, it can be a bit tricky. I think that it probably took us several hours to kind of finagle what it was. And it's likely because there are lots of different styles of garage door openers and the distances. So knowing like which components you need. Um, to make that work in the right place can be tricky. So from, when, from a tech perspective, you have to remember there's software and hardware. So there is the installation part like of the door, for example, like re retrofitting that so that you can have the electric strike in there. Um, same with the garage door opener, but then also the connecting the tech part of it. So the app that we'll, you'll use to connect it. Okay, so there, there, those are things to consider in there. But those spinal cord ones, they're great with automatic lights, automatic blinds, TVs, all of those things. And then fine motor skills. Think about, you know, not having to you know, use the remote or finding exactly where it needs to be or tapping your phone um, in just such a way you could use, you can use the, um, the, the, Alexis to do that kind of thing and measuring, measuring for faucets. Like if there, if there are issues of holding it while, you know, you're doing that, that can help too. So, um, I'm just going to talk about a couple other little ones that I, I happen to know a little bit more about, but of course you can see how you can generalize this to a lot of different 
um, diseases and processes. So with the muscular dystrophy ones, you know, what do they want? They want to connect with peers. They want to do kid stuff. You know, they maybe have more physical issues, but they're, they're still kids inside and they want to have fun. And we have to find a way as clinicians to be able to give them that. So these ones, um, you know, the remote bed controls are great. Some of the wheelchairs are Bluetooth enabled now, so we can do a you know, a, a sit to stand if you need that, um, the smart TVs, the video games, voice activated things. There, there's a lot of potential for um, development, future development for this. Dis uh, develop developmental disabilities, you know, we're trying to create independence for everybody, no matter the age group. So you're always going to have more independence when you can use smart switches for light bulbs or the thermostat. Maybe, you know, temperature regulation is a big thing for spinal cords, but maybe even just me, if I'm laying in bed and I'm a little cold and I, I don't want to get up to go and check the temperature, I can check it on my phone and I can raise it up if I need to. Um, smart blinds, voice control TV, right? So these, it makes sense. These would all help. The other thing to consider too is that there's a lot of accessibility features and they're always getting updated. So you can have, you'll have ones that manage, um, can manage things for hearing impaired, visually impaired, speech impaired. You know, I mentioned earlier, I, I do a lot of Parkinson's patients. I'm a specialist with that. And, you know, they have really quiet voice quality sometimes. And despite that, you know, some of them can still, you know, Alexis have abilities to detect um, different cadences in voice and, you know, different quiet, they call have something called whisper mode. So even at nighttime, let's say you're, you know, you're not, you don't want it to be loud and she'll whisper back to you. It's very fun. And um, later on, you'll see like when you can looking for help, they, you know, there are some assistive tech, you should look for an assistive technology specialist. They will be able to help you, you know, pull out exactly which features are going to be helping for your particular issue. But there's so much in there. And even inside of your iPhones, um, there's a billion of those in there with your iPads and iPhones. Um, yes, it's really quite fun if you start playing with all of it. Um, so of course I'm an aging in place person. So uh, my goal is always, how do you stay out of the hospital? You know, we want to decrease falls. We want to make sure they're taking their meds. We want to make sure that they're getting their doctor's visits. Um, we want to make sure they're safe in their house that, you know, they can see who's at the doorbell before they open it up. Um, I love the garage door opener for Amazon packages. So they're not trying to lug big, heavy things or having to open the door for a delivery person. Um, they can check who it is, say, okay, cool. Like just deliver it into my garage door and then shut it behind you. You have routines um, in routines that are morning and night routines that are really fun that can just basically make a cascade of events. So with a few words, you'll just start this, start all of these things going. It's really like giving instructions to an AI to say, when I say this, I want you to do one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, and again, help me relax, uh, remind me tomorrow to pick up something. It's really great for those little tiny things. So let's talk about those routines a little bit more. It's probably one of my favorite things. I use it all the time. Um, actually probably every single night, that's what we use. Um, so you, you can set th those cues about what it is that you want to say. It, it, they don't decide these things. You decide, okay, if I say this, this is what I want to happen. So at my house, you know, it will turn off the lights, close the blinds, make sure all the doors are locked and open sleep and relaxation sounds. And then, you know, there's tons that you can pick from. Um, what I love about an aging uh, adult at home could be going to the bathroom. So you could say, tell it, hey, I'm going to go. And all the lights come on at 50%, not at 100. Or you could, you could say, I'm getting back to bed you know, we'll turn them all off again. Um, the security system is a separate one. It doesn't do routines as much, and that's probably because it needs a passcode. But, you know, you can, those are just part of what you would do. You would say your cascade, and then then you do your other ones. 
um, like Arvin security system. But I love that you can customize everything like volume down to two, not five, you know, turn those sounds off in an hour. Um, morning routines are the same. So in the morning, you can say good morning. They come on 50%. Um, I have mine programmed to be progressive. I do not want to be woken up you know, at 50%, but the, and that's preference, right? I love that you can build these for preference. I want mine to be 10%, then 20%, then 30% over a period of five minutes. Um, it unlocks all the doors so nobody is, you know, stuck in here with the alarm going off, playing my morning news. And, you know, it has a schedule function. So what's my schedule? What do, and it's fun. They have, what should I wear today? Because it can look at the weather and decide, well, you know, this would be a good idea. Um, again, instructions, right? How do I make this something for breakfast? So mild cognitive deficit, you want to try to live independently as long as possible. These are the patients that I get who are great physically, but they just have, you know, just can't quite remember exactly what they're doing and their families are worried about them and they don't really want to go to assisted living just yet because they're fine. They can get in the shower, no problem. And they just have trouble sometimes with little things. And that's where tech can really shine because tech can help with those little reminders and it can help come up with those word finding things. But they, there are remote monitoring systems that can be totally simplified. So instead of having to say, I'm going to call for pizza, I call Domino's pizza, it can just be programmed to say call pizza. And you know what? If you're a frequent flyer at a place, they generally know what your favorite is and where you live. And you could just say hi. It's and maybe, you know, you don't remember your address. You say, hi, it's Joe. Deliver my normal. And, you know, and I'll see you in five. <laughs> um, you can program the lights to be sundown, too. So they don't have to be... Um, command based they can be time based also so you can imagine for sundowning you know maybe slow the lights slowly start to dim and so it mimics out um you know circadian rhythms it's a really interesting concept and it helps even with outside lights that you might have on that are shining into the house that those ones would turn off slowly at sundown also or maybe you know five hours after sundown um, Ask My Buddy is another concept. Amazon's always coming up with new skills and different things. I mean, really, it's it changes so much, but they have a lot of um, get help functions as well. They didn't used to be able to call 911, but they've recently acquired um, some other technology that can connect it with dispatch as well. Um, for people who are really privacy concerned, though, you know, it's still it's still holding all the information inside of their cloud. So there's always potential for breaking in that one. I have one that I use a lot that is um, complete, its own cloud. So if there's privacy concerns, I'll use that one. Um, but you know, in general, it, it can be a really good way to start. You can start using like an inexpensive one that you can buy from Amazon and just see how you like it. And then if you have concerns, move to something that's a bit more secure. My mild cognitive deficit ones though, for sure I go straight to secure because they, I don't want telemarketers in there, you know, being able to call in. I don't want um, commercials that might trigger you know, buying or anything like that. I want it to be a completely controlled environment. So that's when I'll use something um, that's a little bit more com com protected. <laughs> All right. So in general, you know, that, oh, what is going on around here? Yeah, there we go. Um, another, in general, those remote monitoring things, you know, they really come in like the, the PERS ones and then the sensors and then the, um, voice activation ones. I really like the little, the cameras. If you want to be able to see if somebody is going to have a fall or not, um, if you're looking, if they had a fall, I love water detection because you worry about the slip hazard. There's another uh, system that I use where I love that they pair the motion sensor with the alerts that you can get to caregivers. So, for example, um, if the smart plug 
uh, is connected to the stove and the stove is turned on and the stove now it knows okay the stove's been on for 10 minutes and there's been no motion detected in the kitchen with the sensor it can send an alert to your phone and what i love about this concept is that this is also a cascade based concept where you know it's very ot it's very um can i teach somebody to learn first and give them opportunities to fix that problem before it goes to a 911 emergency. So we're grading the activity. So let's say, for example, somebody did happen to get distracted and now they are um, watching TV, some program came on and oh my goodness, like the, the rules that we set for it, I want to know if there's no motion in the kitchen after 10 minutes my phone, the patient's phone goes off and says, hey, did you forget something on the stove? If that alert is ignored or not responded to, it can go to the next door neighbor or um, the daughter or somebody like that who might call them and say, maybe they all answer the phone and say, hey, they're you know getting an alert. And of course that cascade goes down and down. You decide how many people get alerted before it goes to 911 or before it really becomes a real emergency. So I love that functionality of it. Um, there are also medication concerns sometimes, and you know those ones are really interesting because it really depends on what the problem is for what the solution is. So there's no one solution that's going to fit every person, and that's what that's the the beauty of you know a decision making clinician to overview, look at, it and say, okay, so if the problem is is that they don't remember, um, maybe it's the the reminders. If the problem is that they, you know, you're worried, you want to watch them take it, maybe that is just a drop in and let's watch them. They'll do it together. Um, if you don't want to be as interactive, you know, you can have the dispensers like smart dispensers that are connected. So I get an alert as a daughter that the dispenser was opened and you know, at a certain time. And so you know that it was open, but you can't verify necessarily that it was taken. So you see where the, you see where the nuances are. I mean, it's the same, it's the same thing um, with a lot of these situations. You know, you, you might know one thing, piece of data, but what you really need is the other one. So maybe that's not the solution for you. Um, you know, I, I've seen other ones where if somebody wants to know, are they eating well, they have sensors are there on the fridge. And so how many times is that fridge accessed? Um, and actually that's one, that's another trick actually for medication. Like if you didn't want to spend the money on a medication dispenser, you could also just put a sensor on the cupboard door and the, the cupboard that has the medication in it, was it accessed or not? So, um, here we go. So your phone, your phone becomes the brain. It has everything in it. It's the hub. So that means that you sometimes get a lot of apps. So remember when I was talking about software, this is just some of the apps that are on my phone. <laughs> you get light ones, you know, all the different brands of lights, the, the Lutrons, the Gosons, the Faith, the Levitons, you know, I, I have colored lights that are a different brand. I have outdoor string lights that are another brand, I have pool lights that are another brand, you know, so you can get a little app overload in here, but you know, what I would say is just try it slowly. Just don't be overwhelmed by that. You know, you'll, you, you can create like little bundles on your phone and put all of them in there and it won't seem as overwhelming, but I just want to make sure that you understand, you know, it does take a little bit of practice and time. So what do you do in technology glitches? Always like anything, everything does better when you restart it. You just unplug it and restart, even humans, right? So when you're overloaded, you just, no more tech, you just take a break. So unplug the device, turn off the phone, unplug it for at least 10 seconds, start it up again. Sometimes you have to reinstall the app. So you'll have to hold it on the phone, take it off your phone and then put it back on. And you know, it's a bit of a hassle because you have to log back in and try to remember those passwords. It's, it can be a pain, but sometimes it is the manufacturer, the app that is the problem and not your app that's the problem. So um, there have been times where I've gone to reinstall the app and I get a message that says, hey, don't worry, you know, we're having technical difficulties right now. 
So it's not you, it's us. Um, restart the Wi-Fi. Sometimes everything gets all scrambly in there. So will you just start everything fresh if you can. Those are the easy things to do. So installation, as I mentioned, you have the hardware and the software. So that installation part, if you're having trouble with installing to, you know, the garage door opener or the smart locks, the blinds, think physical things that need to be in there. YouTube videos are, are all um, there. Almost every brand has some YouTube video that they've made. It's you know, sometimes on their website and it links to the YouTube thing. Sometimes you get other people who are sharing what they learned when they tried to install it. So almost always you can find the answers on YouTube for installation stuff for hardware and for software, you know, installing those apps and, you know, making sure you get the updates that can really help. And if you go to the product website, sometimes they also have, you know, hit um, tips and tricks for you there. Um, oh, so the slide is out of order here. So where to get help. So, you know, generally, um, assistive technology states all have assistive technology programs. The one in Florida is called FAST. And I, I love FAST. Um, the uh, coordinator there and I have done a lot of webinars together. You know, they loan out devices. They let people try it before you buy it. And they'll come out to the house help you get it connected with Wi-Fi. They teach you how to use it. Um, you know, it's, it's, a free, it's a free resource that likely every state has, and you're just gonna need to dig a little bit for that. Um, and that was the slide back here. So Pennsylvania has a grant that does a lot of smart homemade simple stuff. And here it is a self-home assessment. They've got tons and tons of information on there, including funding sources and um, other ideas and resources that you can connect to. So that's a really good one. And then if you are looking at paying, Best Buy Geek Squad can set up TVs and phones, home automation, you know, whatever it is, you know, small stuff, they can totally take care of that. If you start getting into bigger stuff, you know, you can call stereo um, speaker guys. Those guys will know how to do that. Um, if you're trying to plan it out from the beginning, you're building a house, you want to get everything into the ceiling, you know, uh, integrated in there, which can be very cool because you're not trying to do all this retrofit like. Think about like, you know, installing wood blocking before you do grab bars. It's that pre-planning before. Um, definitely that's when I would look at um, Home Technology Association because they've got certified integrators that can help you plan out that process because you need somebody that is looking at the entire house and deciding like how much Wi-Fi, where do we need this, where does that switch need to go. So that can be much more complicated. I always say the best way to learn is to try, you know, so start small. Buy a little, buy a little one, maybe an Echo Show, 50 bucks, um, a smart plug and a smart lock, you know, just try it, install it, see how it goes, you know, practice connecting it to Wi-Fi, downloading the apps, installing that hardware. You have to, you have to understand it if you're going to help your patients do it in daily life. So when you practice it and you see how it helps you, it's so much easier to be able to explain it to somebody else. Um, playing with those options is great too. Like I said, they download new parts to it all the time. So, you know, you might have figured it out two years ago, but there's new stuff in there that you want to figure out. And maybe it's solving a problem that you've noticed, um, you know, that, that wasn't being able to be solved a year ago and you need to know how to fix it. Right. So you need to know how to talk somebody, talk to somebody through, how do I reset everything after a power outage? How do I reinstall that app after an update? You know, how do I reconnect it? Cause everything's gone crazy and it's glitching like crazy. So you'll figure out the things that you, that you really like. And if you love those kinds of things, you'll recommend it. And here's me, look, this, I, things don't happen um, without practice. So making mistakes is the best way to learn. You know, this is me, you know, when I'm, I was teaching myself how to install grab bars and finding those studs and darn it if I didn't have 10 holes in the wall and a big giant hole in there and I still couldn't find it. But it's okay because when you fail, when you try and fail, your patients get to succeed and win. So just remember that when you're trying to patch all these things up afterwards. 
So here's my contact information. I would love it if you connect with me. I'm, my uh, handle is at, at Evolving Homes Jacks on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. And I actually have a channel on YouTube that I am building out and it's called Age in Place or Find a New Space because I want people to be able to figure out how can they, what do they need to do to be able to stay in their space? And sometimes it's just cheaper to move to another space. <laughs> And I'm a realtor as well. That's where this comes in. So I hope you guys learned something today. And I will hope to connect with you um, at another date. Thanks for coming. <laughs>